majesty, worship his majesty. Unto Jesus be all glory, power, and praise. Well, majesty, kingdom authority flows from his throne unto his own, his anthem raise. So exalt, lift up on high the name of Jesus. Magnify, come glorify Christ Jesus the King. O oh, majesty, worship his majesty. Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all kings. Oh yes, lovely little song. That song came forth out of Jack Hayford. Jack Hayford, if you remember him, he was a very well-known pastor in California, and he was just riding down the road with his wife one day, and he turned to her and he said, quick, get a paper and a piece of pencil and write down. And he began to sing this and had these words, and she quickly wrote them down so they didn't forget. <clears throat> Isn't it great to hear how wonderful songs come about? They come about just like that, usually. Well, welcome to the reading of a Word of God on this beautiful brand new day. I don't know about you, but I have enjoyed a gorgeous sunset, all kinds of shades of morning glory, just beautiful, on this July 7. July 7. <clears throat> this was the day in 1977 when Sammy and I renewed our marriage vows at 7.30 in the evening. And uh, it was a wonderful time, a wonderful time. So we are continuing on here on July 7th with First Chronicles. We are up to chapter 4, picking up with verse 5. Chapter 4, picking up with 5. Aleph divrei hayamin is how you say it in Hebrew. And uh, it's kind of fun to learn a few things. And we just bless and love our dear brother, Scott Paddock, who comes occasionally when he can and always gives us some wonderful spiritual nuggets. So let's see what's happening here in this passage, okay? And Asher, the father of Tekoa, had two wives, Hela and Narach. Nara bore him Ahuzam, Heper, Temani, and Ahashatari. These were the sons of Nera. The sons of Hela were Zeret, Zohar, and Ethnan. And Koz begot Anob, Zobeba, and the families of Aharel, the son of Harum. Now, Yebez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother called his name Jabez, okay? And it means he will cause pain. Because I bore him in pain is why she, called, she named him that. Must have been a very hard labor. And Yebez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh! that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hands would be with me and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So there you have it. He did not want to have his name come to pass, and that would be hard to have that name, wouldn't it? So God granted him what he requested. Shelob, the brother of Shuha, begot Meir, who was the father of Eshton. And Eshton begot Beit Rapha, Pasia, and Tehana, the father of Irnahash. These were the men of Rekha. The sons of Kenaz were Othanel and Sarai. 
And the sons of Othanel were Hatath and Meonathi, who begot Ophrah. Syria begot Joab, the father of Geherashim, for they were craftsmen. The sons of Caleb, the son of Jephthana, were Eru, Elah, and Naim. The son of Elah was Kenaz. The sons of Yahalalel were Ziph, Zipha, Tira, and Asarel. The sons of Isra were Yeter, Mered, Eper, and Yalkan. And Mered's wife bore Miriam, Shami, and Isha, the father of Eshtiola. His wife, Yehudiah, bore Yered, the father of Gador, Heber, the father of Socha, and Yehuthiel, the father of Zanoa. And these were the sons of Bithia, the daughter of Pharaoh, whom Mered took. The sons of Hodiah's wife, the sister of Naham, were the fathers of Kila, the Garmite, and of Ishtemoa, the Machathite. And the sons of Shimon were Anan, Rimna, Ben-Hanan, and Tilan. And the sons of Ishi were Zoheth and Ben-Zoheth. The sons of Sela were son, the son of Judah were Ur, the father of Lecha, Lada, the father of Merasha, and the families of the house of the linen workers of the house of Ashbia. Also Joachim, the men of Chezubah, and Joash, Serap, who ruled in Moab, and Yashobi, Lehem. Now the records are ancient. These were the potters and those who dwell at Nataim and Gedera. There they dwelt with the king for his work. The sons of Simeon were Nemuel, Yamin, Yarib, Zerah, and Shaul. Shalom, his son, Mibsam, his son, and Mishma his son. And the sons of Mishma were Hamuel, his son, Zachor, his son, and Shemei, his son. Shemei had 16 sons and six daughters. Wow. But his brothers did not have many children, nor did any of their families multiply as much as the children of Judah. They dwelt at Beersheba, Molada, Hazar, Shaul, Bilha, Esim, Tolad, Bethuel, Hormat, Ziklag, Beit Machabot, Hazor, Shushim, Beit Beri, and at Shararim. These were their cities until the reign of David, and their villages were Etam, Ain, Rimon, Tokian, and Ashan five cities, and all the villages that were around these cities as far as Baal. These were their dwelling places, and they maintained their genealogy. Meshobah, Yamlech, and Yosha, the son of Amaziah, Yoel, and Yehu, the son of Yoshabiah, the son of Seriah, the son of Asael, Elioni, Yaakobah, Yeshohiah, Asahiah, Adiel, Yeshamiel, and Beniah, Ziza, the son of Shephi, the son of Alan, the son of Yediah, the son of Shamri, the son of Shemiah. They certainly did keep their genealogy in order. These mentioned by name were leaders in their families, and their father's house increased greatly. So they went to the entrance of Gedor as far as the east side of the valley to seek pasture for their flocks. And they found rich, good pasture, and the land was broad, quiet, and peaceful, for some Hamites formerly lived there. 
These, recorded by name, came in the days of Hezekiah, king of Judah, and they attacked their tents and the Mennonites who were found there and utterly destroyed them, as it is to this day. So they dwelt in their place, because there was pasture for their flocks there. Now some of them, 500 men of the sons of Simeon, went to Mount Seir, having as their captains Pelatea, Neriah, Rephaiah, and Usiel, the sons of Ishi. And they defeated the rest of the Amalekites who had escaped. They have dwelt there to this day. <clears throat> and we move right along to chapter 5 of Aleph Divrei Hayamin, 1 Chronicles. Now the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, he was indeed the firstborn. But because he defiled his father's bed, his birthright was given to the sons of Joseph, the son of Israel, so that the genealogy is not listed according to the birthright. Yet Judah prevailed over his brothers, and from him came a ruler, although the birthright was Joseph's. The sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, were Hanak, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. The sons of Yoel were Shemaiah, his son, Gog, his son, Shemai, his son, Micha, his son, Reie, his son, Baal, his son, and Berah, his son, whom Tugoth Pileser, king of Assyria, carried into captivity. He was leader of the Reubenites, and his brethren by their families, when the genealogy of their generations was registered, the chief, Yael, and Zechariah, and Bela, the son of Azaz, the son of Shema, the son of Yoel, who dwelt in Oriar, as far as Nebo and baal Meon. Eastward, they settled as far as the entrance of the wilderness, this side of the river Euphrates, because their cattle had multiplied in the land of Gilead. Now, in the days of Shaul, Paul, they made war with the Hagrites. Well, I don't know if they said Paul or not back then. Shaul. War with the Hagrites, who fell by their hand. And they dwelt in their tents throughout the entire area east of Gilead. And the children of Gad dwelt next to them in the land of Bashan as far as Salka. Yoel was the chief, Shapam the next, and then Yani and Shapat in Bashan. And their brethren of their father's house, Michiel, Meshulam, Sheba, Yorii, Yachan, Zia, and Abar, seven of them in all. These were the children of Abihail, the son of Huri, the son of Yeroah, the son of Gilead, the son of Michael, the son of Yeshashi, the son of Yado, the son of Buz. Ahi, the son of Abdiel, the son of Guni, was chief of their father's house. And the Gadites dwelt in Gilead, in Bashan, and in its villages, and in all the common lands of Sharon within their borders. All these were registered by genealogies in the days of Yatham, king of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, king of Israel. <clears throat> And so we have that history documented all these years. Isn't that awesome? Now we move right along to the New Covenant, the New Testament. And we are enjoying the book of Acts. We are up to chapter 25 today. 25. And continuing with this exciting story, 
Now when Festus had come to the province, after three days he went up from Caesarea to Jerusalem. And then the high priest and the chief men of the Jews informed him against Paul. And they petitioned him, asking a favor against him, that he would summon him to Jerusalem while they lay in ambush along the road to kill him. But Festus answered that Paul should be kept at Caesarea and that he himself was going there shortly. Therefore, he said, let those who have authority among you go down with me and accuse this man to see if there is any fault in him. And when he had remained among them more than ten days, he went down to Caesarea. And the next day, sitting on the judgment seat, he commanded Paul be brought. And when he had come, the Jews who had come down from Jerusalem stood about and laid many serious complaints against Paul, which they could not prove, while he answered for himself neither against the law of the Jews, nor against the temple, nor against Caesar, have I offended in anything at all. But Festus, wanting to do the Jews a favor, answered Paul and said, Are you willing to go up to Jerusalem and there be judged before me concerning these things? And Paul said, I stand at Caesar's judgment seat, where I ought to be judged. To the Jews I have done no wrong, as you very well know. For if I am an offender, or have committed anything deserving of death, I do not object to dying. But if there is nothing in these things of which these men accuse me, no one can deliver me to them. I appeal to Caesar, and then Festus, when he had conferred with the council, announced, You have appealed to Caesar? To Caesar you shall go. And after some days, King Agrippa and Bernus came to Caesarea to greet Festus. And when they had been there many days, Festus laid Paul's case before the king, saying, there is a certain man left a prisoner by Felix, about whom the chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me when I was in Jerusalem, asking for a judgment against him. To them I answered, It is not the custom of the Romans to deliver any man to destruction before the accused meets the accuser's face to face and has opportunity to answer for himself concerning the charge against him. <clears throat> Therefore, when they had come together, without any delay, the next day I sat on the judgment seat and commanded the man to be brought in. And when the accusers stood up, they brought no accusation against him of such things as I supposed but had some questions about him, about their own religion, and about a certain Jesus, who had died, whom Paul affirmed to be alive. And because I was uncertain of such questions, I asked whether he was willing to go to Jerusalem and there be judged concerning these matters. But when Paul appealed to be reserved for the decision of Augustus, I commanded him to be kept till I could send him to Caesar. <clears throat> and then Agrippa said to Festus, I also would like to hear the man myself. Tomorrow, he said, you shall hear him. So the next day, when Agrippa and Bernice had come with great pomp, and had entered the auditorium with the commanders and the prominent men of the city. At Festus' command, Paul was brought in. 
And Festus said, King Agrippa and all the men who are here present with us, you see this man about whom the whole assembly of the Jews petitioned me, both at Jerusalem and here, crying out that he was not fit to live any longer. But when I found that he had committed nothing deserving of death, and that he himself had appealed to Augustus, I decided to send him. I have nothing certain to write to my Lord concerning him. Therefore, I have brought him out before you, and especially before you, King Agrippa, so that after the examination has taken place, I may have something to write. <clears throat> but it seems to me unreasonable to send a prisoner and not to specify the charges against him. <clears throat> and so we leave off there with this incredible story of truth that happened. But you can read on if you'd like. Your Bible is in your hand. Read on. It doesn't hurt to read it and then hear it again and then read it again and then hear it again. We need the word in us, in us. All right, we move right along today to Psalm 5. We are rereading all of the Psalms for the last part of this year. This is another Psalm of David given to the chief musician, and they wrote parts of music for the flutes, for the flutes. Give ear to my words, O Lord, consider my meditation. Give heed to the voice of my cry, my King and my God, for to you I will pray. My voice you shall hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning I will direct it to you, and I will look up. For you are not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness, nor shall evil dwell with you. The boastful shall not stand in your sight. You hate all workers of iniquity. You shall destroy those who speak falsehood. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful man. But as for me, I will come into your house in the multitude of your mercy. In fear of you, I will worship towards your holy temple. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before my face. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is destruction. Their throat is an open tomb. They flatter with their tongue. Pronounce them guilty, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against you. But let all those rejoice who put their trust in you. Let them ever shout for joy because you defended them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor, you will surround him as with a shield. Beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, Someday we'll go to heaven and we will hear the music that was put to this. I'm excited about that. All right, my sweet brothers and sisters, we will wrap up today's reading with Proverbs. We are still in chapter 1, repeating the Proverbs also for the second time. Proverbs 18, verse 19, not 1. Proverbs 18, verse 19. 
a brother offended is harder to win than a strong city. And contentions are like the bars of a castle. Wow, what a description. And very true. It's very hard to win your brother back once you've offended him. He is a little cautious about you now. And a whole bunch of contentions are like the bars of a castle. So true. All right, my precious friends. Let us take time here to give thanksgiving and to pray. Precious, wonderful Father God, how you have blessed us today. We want to thank you for your word. Your never-ending word that is firm. You have spoken it and it shall not pass away. It shall continue. And we want to bless you and thank you for your precious only begotten son, Jesus, Yeshua, <clears throat> who you gave to us, who bravely said that he would bear our sins on the cross. And he did. He did and suffered greatly and bore our sins. And for that, we are forever humbled and grateful. We would have no future at all without the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. And now it is finished. You cried, it is finished, Jesus. And now we can have a presence with our Heavenly Father. We can come to love and know you intimately and be assured of going to heaven. Oh, hallelujah. If you don't know Jesus, please let this be the day. Don't wait any longer. Don't risk it. You don't know how many days of life you have on this earth. So I suggest you come and join us in prayer and confess your sins to the Lord and ask him to forgive you. He will. He's waiting for you to confess them so that he can. And then ask him to be your savior, your Lord. And he will direct your life in wonderful ways. You don't want to miss it. Don't put it off. Just say a simple prayer to him. Ask him to come in. Father God, we're asking for peace in Jerusalem. We pray for peace within your city that you have chosen, where you said your name will be there forever. Precious Father God, let peace rule and reign within her city walls, all of the outskirts, Father, particularly by the borders of other countries where it's so dangerous. The enemy is trying to destroy them by throwing things. And we praise God that you've given them a wonderful invention called the Iron Dome that somehow miraculously catches missiles in the air and destroys them before they ever harm anyone. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you for this, Lord. Thank you for the wisdom that you have given your people. Father God, we ask for a special anointing and blessing upon Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu a brave, wonderful warrior and soldier for you, already tried and proven true. Father God, let him receive answers from you for every issue 
that is presented before him. Precious Lord, we'd ask that you would be with the Knesset and that you would cause them to agree on things. We give you praise and honor and glory for putting peace in their hearts. Peace. We give you praise, Lord. We thank you for all the tourists that are there. And we'd ask, Lord, that you would put your right hand of protection over all of them, the whole country. And we will give you praise and honor and glory. Lord, anoint those who are digging and digging to find the truth of the past, to find great relics. Show them, Lord, where to dig, where to be. Supernaturally, show them. And let the world be amazed at what they find. Father God, I hold up America to you. Others are holding up their countries, countries of their ancestors, countries where maybe you were born. We'd ask, Lord, that you would hear their prayers, that you would hear the prayers for their leadership of their countries, whatever the problems are, and their thanksgivings for whatever is really good. And Father God, we'd ask that um, you would take down this absolutely ridiculously evil uh, presence that we have in our White House. I mean, they found cocaine. I mean, things are just, it's an abomination. It's an absolute abomination. The shame of this man who was never duly elected president set him on his own self up. And Lord, I'd ask that you would deal with Mr. Obama and Mr. Soros and all those involved in plans of destruction. Deal with them, precious Lord. We lift up prayers we lift up prayers that America be saved to be the republic that she was made by your hand of blessing. Hallelujah, Lord. We want this country to be of the people, for the people, by the people. By the people. The way our Constitution is set up. And so, Lord, we hold up our Constitution we are grateful. We are grateful for what it says. And we'd ask, Lord, that once again, it would come to the forefront of the knowledge in the eyes of all the people of America, that we would take time to read again what was written and proclaimed. Many of those ancestors even died bringing it forth for us. Let us take responsibility for keeping it intact. Lord, I thank you that you will hear all the private prayers of all of your sons and daughters. All the issues that are on their hearts, all the people who they are praying for, for salvation, for healing, for deliverance. We hold them up to you, Lord, and we give you praise and honor and glory. And last but not least, I hold up to you, Lord, President Donald Trump and his family and those who served him in his time. And Lord, I'd ask that you would restore to him what was cheated, what was stolen. Restore to him, Lord, tenfold. And we are believing, Lord, already. We are praying for the coming elections, that there would be people stationed in every position who will carefully watch that things are done according to the way they should be. One ballot put in a box by one person and counted accurately. 
Please, precious God, preserve the hand voting of people who are citizens and bravery to turn away those who try to cheat and aren't citizens. And we will give you praise and honor and glory in Jesus' mighty, powerful, and wonderful name, Lord of Lords, King of Kings, soon to break through the clouds and come the second time. And when he rules and reigns the world, it will be awesome. Hallelujah. Have a great